Hi everyone, I hope you are always healthy. This time I will be discussing about money and perhaps this will be my last time participating as a narrator on this channel. I want you to know that I am very proud to have been a part of this channel. I hope you too are proud to be loyal viewers of this channel. Without further ado, I will miss these magical words by the way. Fasten your pants and let's get started. In the past, before the emergence of money, humans enjoyed a state of freedom. However, with the rise of land-owning feudal gangsters, they began to enslave the peasants and eventually created the concept of money. This currency, unlike other commodities, is created by banking gangsters without any physical labor or resources. Even after the emancipation of the serfs, they remained in the grasp of these gangsters through taxes, usury, and inflation. Different forms of governance, such as socialism, communism, and democracy, are all methods of managing human livestock on Earth. To keep productivity high, rulers create an illusion of freedom, allowing people to leave but preventing them from achieving true freedom. Licensing is used to regulate the most productive professionals, while government schools are used as a tool for indoctrination and to produce intellectuals to propagate state propaganda. The authorities manipulate interest rates and taxes to benefit the wealthy criminal elite. By controlling these factors, they determine how much of your earnings go towards them and how much you get to keep for yourself. They use propaganda and laws to enslave you with your own money, forcing you to exchange your hard-earned goods and money for their digital or paper currency, which perpetuates their eternal collective debt. They always benefit as money trickles up to them, and when they make risky investments, they are bailed out at the expense of the people. Their financial system resembles a Las Vegas-style gambling house with the people's treasury serving as their slush fund. They create economic bubbles and withdraw their investments before they burst, causing harm to ordinary citizens. They view ordinary people as slaves, drafting them to fight wars for their profit and operating under cruel Babylonian philosophies. This system is socialism for the elite and survival of the fittest for everyone else. As Thomas Jefferson said, When the government fears the people, you have liberty. When the people fear the government, or the IRS for that matter, you have tyranny. To break free from this system, we must be brave and use our reasoning abilities. We do not have to be livestock. We can take the red pill, awaken, and free our souls by embracing the truth. Before I continue the video, please give it a like if you've learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss any updates. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstandings. Thank you. Many people dislike being told that they are essentially enslaved by a continuing chain of ancient feudal elites who believe they have a divine right to rule over us. In this research, we will reveal that everything we have been taught about the world financial system is incorrect. Although many people from all walks of life have explained this, it has been deliberately kept from news and educational institutions to keep the public in the dark. As the Virginia House of Delegates stated in 1832, we have, as far as possible, closed every avenue by which light may enter there the slaves' minds. If we could extinguish the capacity to see the light, our work would be complete. Our money system is not what we have been led to believe. The creation of money has been privatized or taken over by private moneylenders. President Thomas Jefferson referred to them as bold and bankrupt adventurers just pretending to have money. With the exception of coins, all of our money is now created as loans advanced by private banking institutions, including the privately owned Federal Reserve. Banks create the principal, but not the interest to service their loans. To pay the interest, new loans must continuously be taken out, expanding the money supply, inflating prices, and devaluing your money. Furthermore, a small number of very large banks are responsible for a massive investment scheme called derivatives, totaling hundreds of trillions of dollars. This banking system is designed so that these large banks are always bailed out by taxpayers from their risky ventures. 
but this scheme has reached its mathematical limits. The current monetary financial system is a form of organized crime, not free markets, and is built on illegitimate debt slavery and captive usury markets. The system is intentionally designed to make the rich richer and the poor poorer, and wars serve as mega-harvests for the elite bankers and their supporters. The Cree Native American proverb states that people will only realize the value of nature after it's been destroyed. Albert J. Knox's economic axiom explains that goods and services can only be paid for with other goods and services, not with money. President Thomas Jefferson claimed that paper money is just a representation of value, not actual value itself. Leo Tolstoy compared money to a form of impersonal slavery. The financial system is rigged in favor of the bankers, who create money as ledger entries without any collateral and charge interest on the loans. The wealthy bankers, including the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, and Goldman Sachs, have a monopoly on the creation of money, and their profits are privatized while their debts are socialized and transferred to the taxpayers. As the usurious debt grows exponentially, the bankers steal wealth from the people and collect interest on stolen money. Inability to repay a debt is not a crime, but people are being locked up for it, which is unfair. The bankers who issue the world currency enjoy the highest standard of living and military power in their country. The entire global financial system can be likened to a pyramid scheme with four key elements. 1. Deliberate shortage of state-issued money. The state's legal tender, such as the funny money issued by the private Federal Reserve in the U.S., is the true currency. However, the system is designed in such a way that there is never enough of it to meet the needs of the economy. 2. Replacement of real money with private money. The private banking system has enough influence over the state to ensure that it always issues inadequate amounts of money. Banks then step in to offer individuals and businesses the money they need, using the fractional reserve system to charge exorbitant interest rates and make enormous profits. This system replaces real currency with funny money that grows exponentially through fractional banking. 3. Consumer credit creation and debt. Banks lend money to governments, corporations, and individuals, creating a debt-based system where everyone owes money to the banks. The amount of funny money in circulation has grown enormously, with the derivatives market alone valued at $531 trillion in 2008. This system has overwhelmed the real economy, making it impossible to halt its growth. Bailout plans are ineffective due to the sheer size of the problem. 4. Private profits, socialized losses. Since the system is designed as a model, its workings are predictable. As the system grows, there is money everywhere, with easy loans and credit leading to profits for everyone involved. These huge profits are directed towards certain individuals or groups. When the system collapses, the losses are socialized, just as the profits were privatized. Taxpayers are often required to fund bailouts or the Fed must issue more money. This discussion has only scratched the surface of this complex topic, and we look forward to continuing this conversation in the future. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it valuable and informative, please show your support by liking and sharing it with your friends and family. Together, we can spread awareness and make a positive impact on the world. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our upcoming videos. Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming next. Thank you for sticking around until the end. I hope the information shared here was useful and insightful for you. Until next time.